Now for tonight's program, we have our friend Richard Chait back. Um, Richard and I got to know each other about six, seven years ago now, at least. And it's when he was working on his book, um, Rails in and Around Saratoga Springs. So we became friends, we traveled around the area looking at um, past places where there were rail lines, showing him places that I snuck into when I was a kid and where you can see some things. And I think he's gonna share some of that with you tonight that we did after last year's um, lecture. But tonight he's gonna talk about a very special uh, train in Saratoga Springs, the Saratoga Limited. And it was one that ran from New York City right up to here, and it was a really special run. So I'm not gonna tell you about it, but he is. So I'm gonna turn the microphone over to Richard. Thank, thank you, Jamie, and thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, and I thank the support that my family has given me as well. Uh, Saratoga Public Library, Saratoga Springs Public Library has helped me. The Schuylerville Public Library, as well as the Saratoga, Saratoga County Historian. We'll take questions at the end, so you have a piece of paper, write them down. Uh, I'm going to be talking, um, in addition to the Saratoga Limited, uh, about something that came up uh, concerning last year's talk. Last year's talk was on the Saratoga and Schuylerville Railroad. And you may take a look at that and remember that from last year's talk, that is a GE 44-ton switcher crossing Bryant's Bridge Road, just off Burgoyne Road. And I'll be talking about that because uh, Jamie and I, as he mentioned, uh, decided to take a little tour after last year's talk and looking for remnants of the Saratoga and Schuylerville Railroad. And we kind of hit pay dirt just off uh, Burgoyne Road, very close to Bryant's Bridge Road, and uh, Brown's Lane. It's a very small side, uh, side road, uh, and I'll just Describe to you what we what we found. So I'm going to show you some photographs uh, and some images before we get into the Saratoga Limited. So basically, the talk today is going back a little bit, talking about the Saratoga and Schuylerville Railroad, which was the subject last year at this time, and then we'll get into the Saratoga Limited. So okay. Um, right here, this is Route 29 right here, I, I believe. There's Bryant's Bridge Road, and there's Burgoyne Road. This is uh, it's called the Fitchburg Railroad, but actually the Fitchburg Railroad turned into this, uh, the uh, Saratoga and Schuylerville Railroad, and it, it crossed over Fish Creek right here. And so that became of interest to us. And this map kind of shows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, this Fish Creek. This is that side road I was talking about. Uh, it's actually Brown's Point Lane, but I'll just call it Brown's Lane. And it's right off of, of uh, Burgoyne Road. So Jamie and I uh, went down this road, and we thought we encountered some bumps along the way. And these bumps basically were um, at given intervals. They they weren't random. They were equidistant, I would say, between each bump. And as we came back on this road, he looked at me and I looked at him and 
I think those are ties. Those are probably the roadbed. That's the right of way of the Saratoga and, and Schuylerville Railroad. I went back uh, after uh, we finished the tour, a couple weeks after, and it went, after some rain, I thought that maybe, just maybe, these ties, this roadbed on Brown's Lane would show up. And I think uh, coming back paid off because this is what I encountered. And you can see, uh, I took a close up. I think it becomes very evident that these equidistant bumps that we encountered when Jamie and I first went down this road probably, most likely, uh, is the roadbed of this Skylerville, Saratoga and Skylerville Railroad. And if we go back, you can see that this brown, brown lane is really the the roadbed for the Saratoga and Schuylerville Railroad because there's there the crossing is there's the crossing for a, a Fish Creek and we'll go back one more and so this image that I started with basically crossing Brown um, Bryant's Bridge Road on its way to Saratoga is 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 really what we're we're talking about. So after Bryant's Bridge Road, it, it went down what is now Brown's Lane. So I just thought I'd share it with you, and maybe if you're that what down that way, you can take a short ride down Brown's Lane, uh, and hopefully you'll encounter uh, what we encountered. So. Uh, I think it fulfilled our desire to to uh, try to get more in the Saratoga and Schuylerville Railroad. It's very hard to find. I mean, there are pilings, and even they have disappeared. So, uh, with that, uh, and you can have questions. We'll we'll, do, we'll we'll take questions at the end. So I'm going to go now to. Uh, turn the, turning the clock back to uh, uh, maybe 50, 60, 70 years from when the Saratoga and Schuylerville Railroad was operating uh, in the 1940s and 1950s to the turn of the century uh, to Saratoga Springs, Saratogas, we'll call it, uh, Gilded Age, 1870 through maybe 19, uh, 1910, 1920. And I don't know how many of you have seen the movie, gotten the movie from the uh, library, but it, it's kind of interesting the way uh, Colonel Maroon tries to woo his girlfriend New Orleans, from New Orleans up to Saratoga. He describes he describes it as, 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 as follows. He says, nothing like Saratoga. There's gambling, the races, famous people, beautiful hotels. And so she acquiesces and she comes up. She gets off the train here in Saratoga Springs. And this, mo this movie starring Gary Cooper and Ingrid Bergman uh, was filmed here in Saratoga Springs, and it's based on a book by um, Edna Ferber, 1941, I think. The movie uh, was made in 1945. So she comes to Saratoga and gets off the train, and she encounters uh, bells ringing, horses rearing, uh, hotel uh, runners yelling, trying to get these people that have come off the train to go with them to a hotel or 
the casino or the track or wherever. And so, uh, just as a reminder, because I'm setting the stage now for the Saratoga Limited, because the Saratoga Limited just didn't appear out of nowhere. I mean, there was a reason for it to come up here. So, we're going to set the stage now, and uh, you can see here uh, the activity at the beautiful train station, which is gone. But um, you can see the horses, you can see all the uh, activity, the, 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 the yelling that must have occurred as, as uh, she got off the train uh, and encountered for the first time Saratoga. Uh, this is the, of course, the, the Grand Union Hotel. We'll go rapidly through these. Um, and the next one is the United States Hotel. You, you've probably seen all these. Uh, they come from the Bolster Collection here in the Saratoga Franciscan Museum, courtesy of Jamie. This is the Congress Hall Hotel. All of these are, of course, gone. <coughs> At the track. Uh, still there, still very active. Uh, people along the rail. So this is what attracted Cleo Delane to come up here from New Orleans and uh, settle down and, and uh, become uh, Colonel Maroon's wife. Uh, this is a, a photograph of George Daniels, who worked at the time for the New York Central Railroad for Commodore Vanderbilt. This gentleman was a railroader from the Midwest and uh, had a tremendous amount of experience in committees and commissions, and he knew how to write. Very creative individual. And Vanderbilt told him, look, I want you to publicize the passenger service on the New York Central Railroad. Actually, it was the New York Central and, and uh, Harlem River, I think it was the Hudson River Railroad, because it went not only from Albany to Buffalo, but also down to, uh, from Albany down to New York. So Daniels did a couple of things. He created the Empire State Express. We're talking now 1892, from basically from New York City to Albany. Very famous train. And in 1893, with some very large driving wheels, which are the big wheels that you see there, he put uh, these driving wheels here, 86 inch diameter wheels. Why did he do that? Because he wanted to set a speed record. And when the Empire State Express in 1893 reached a location just outside of Batavia, New York, which is halfway between Rochester and, and uh, Buffalo, they opened up the speed on this to its maximum at 112.5 miles an hour. The record still stands. This caught the public's eye. And you can see in the bottom right, Daniels and a postage stamp. The, 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 you, the, the Postal Service said, hey, this is important. We will make a postal stamp out of this. Here it is, and um, again, it recreates the Empire State Express as it reached the, the, the speed of 112.5 miles an hour. Daniels also brought this 
engine to the Chicago World's Fair in 1893, along with uh, other inventions at that time. Uh, the elevator, the Ferris wheel. So the World's Fair, 1893 in Chicago. Can everyone hear me in the back? Okay. Uh, was quite an event. But Daniels wasn't through yet. He was not through. In 1899, keep in mind now, 1893, he created the, uh, the Empire State Express which up until a couple years ago was still running. After uh, Amtrak took over New York Central, they did away with that. It's now called Empire Service, but basically it's the same route. So anyway, 1899, with the cooperation of the Delaware and Hudson, he originated the Saratoga Limited because they knew that Saratoga was a very active area. You, you'll see in one of the ads for, for, for Saratoga, they call it America's watering hole. First time I'd seen that. But it was really Saratoga's gilded age. And uh, so in, in cooperation with, Del, with Delaware and Hudson, because Delaware and Hudson had the railroad from Albany to Saratoga. New York Central didn't, rails didn't run that far. They ran from New York City to Albany and then Albany westward. So there was a change of, of engines here and we'll talk about that in a minute. So this Saratoga Limited, because Daniels was interested in speed, made it from New York City to Saratoga Springs in three and a half hours, nonstop, except for one engine change, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. The 180 miles, three and a half hours, so that averages out probably about 50 miles an hour. Again, speed paid off for George, George Daniels. This was covered in Leslie's Weekly, Talking about the new Saratoga Limited, uh, luxurious train between the city, second city of the world, I guess that's New York, and America's greatest watering hole. Every day but Sunday. And on the bottom, you can see all Wagner Palace, uh, palace cars. These were luxurious cars specially created for the Saratoga Limited, and I'll, I'll get into those as well. This uh, map basically describes the route that it took. New York City's down here, comes up the Hudson River uh, to Troy, from Troy up to Saratoga Springs, as I said, it is the Delaware and Hudson. So there was a change here of engines right here from New York Central to the Delaware and Hudson. Uh, 180 miles in 210 minutes, three and a half hours. Uh, this was something on the internet that I found uh, probably uh, passing Bear Mountain or Storm King Mountain along the Hudson just north of, of uh, New York near West Point. Uh, this is the engine that uh, powered the Saratoga Limited from New York City. You can see on the tender uh, NYC and HR, New York's New York Central plus the Hudson River Railroad. This was uh, Vanderbilt's acquisition before he started to uh, make additional um, additions to his, his uh, empire by acquiring 
railroads in the Midwest. Uh, it's good to note here that this engine here, for you uh, train enthusiasts, uh, it has four driving wheels, two on this side and two on the other side. Uh, when they changed engines in Troy over to the um, Delaware and Hudson, it's kind of a funny engine, but it's called uh, a uh, Old Mother Hubbard uh, center cab, had different names, but this was the engine that, that Delaware and Hudson had at the time. You can see that there were a little bit, it was more powerful probably than the New York Central. I gotta go back here. Um, had six driving wheels. And the reason it was, a, they used a center cab, which didn't last very many years, but a lot of railroads tried it because it enlarged the firebox on these steam, in, steam engines. This photograph was taken from uh, Jim Shaughnessy's book, Delaware and Hudson, uh, that he wrote, a very popular book. He was probably the most uh, expert on the Delaware and Hudson, and, and, and his, his book is, is, is basically the Bible. Uh, and so this photograph in a section that describes the Saratoga Limited uh, also has these photographs of the engine that was used. And let me go. It's a close-up of this center cab for the Delaware and Hudson. So it came into Saratoga Springs and went up into the Champlain, Lake Champlain Valley, and probably had to slow down because of the uh, of the, 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 the terrain. So it's very doubtful that they maintain that 50 mile an hour uh, speed uh, that took the train from uh, New York to Saratoga Springs. Um, this is kind of interesting. This comes from the Saratoga County Historian's Office. In 1906, you can see right at the bottom, um, they had a derailment in Boston Spa. Um, and it says, wreck of the Saratoga Limited at Boston Spa, 1906. The train itself, the Saratoga Limited, basically was short-lived. It started in 1899 and didn't go beyond 1906, not because there was a wreck, although that probably didn't help matters, but because there was an anti-gambling sentiment here in, in Saratoga at the time, and so things kind of calmed down, and, and um, uh, probably decreased the popularity of the, of the Saratoga Limited. So 1899, 1906, you know, six, seven years, and that was the end. Why did, why did this go off the tracks? I, I don't know. I, uh, I tried to figure that out. I couldn't find the reason for it. But you can see that as it came through Balsam Spa here, there's a kind of a curve there. And if it's, if it's not careful and slowing down, uh, it may have uh, gone off the rails. But again, this. Wreck of the Saratoga Limited, Balsam Spa, July uh, 1906. Um, I said, I mentioned the cars were specially made for the Saratoga Limited. Uh, the person who honchoed that, who oversaw that, was a gentleman by the name of Webster Wagner, who was born in. Palantine Bridge, not too far from here in the, in the Mohawk Valley, uh, I think between Utica and Amsterdam. And he had a wagon make, uh, manufacturing business, 
and it wasn't doing very well, so he expanded his his ability to create and invented the sleeping car. And Vanderbilt uh, funded him to start manufacturing sleeping cars. And before you know it, he had he was operating the New York Central Sleeping Car Company. But that wasn't enough for him. He went out on his own. Uh, created a company in Buffalo, New York, a huge company, 36 acres, and employed a lot of people, uh, carvers, carpenters, electricians, uh, and it was one of the biggest uh, companies in Buffalo, very, because it employed so many people all manufacturing these luxurious cars, buffet cars, uh, observation parlor cars, parlor cars, and we'll take a look at some of them in a minute. Uh, this is a parlor car, uh, not the best photograph, but it, it, uh, I took this from uh, Shaughnessy's book. Uh, this was the Albany, the parlor car Albany, that was the name of the parlor car that um, was on the Saratoga Limited. Um, this is another parlor car of the same age, but it, it shows clearly how luxurious uh, these cars were. Uh, this is an observation car, again from Shaughnessy's book. Um, this is, uh, wasn't uh, employed on the Saratoga Limited, but it was the Wagner vestibule car. And you can see that the same kind of luxury was afforded here in this observation car. Um, I want to switch gears here now and talk a little bit about trains and their scheduled time from uh, New York City to Saratoga. This is the Laurentian, D&H's crack train from, uh, in partnership with the New York Central that ran from New York City to Montreal. Here it is coming into the Troy station and they're gonna change engines here, it's the same kind of situation as before. If they're going to go to New York City from Montreal, change engines in Troy, and let New York Central take it down the rest of the way down the Hudson to New York City. So this is the Laurentian, it's a D&H Pacific type engine, one of their best. This is the New York Central engine waiting, waiting to uh, couple on and take it take it down to uh, New York City. Uh, this is a, uh, a Jim Shaughnessy photograph. Uh, you can see that it's a New York Central observation car ready to pull out of the Troy station on its way to New York City. What I wanted to show here was Saratoga Limited, three and a half hours, Saratoga, New York City to Saratoga. If you look at this timetable, which is, I think, 19, oops, gotta go back. Um, giving me all kinds of trouble here. Okay, uh, train number 35 is the Laurentian. Nine o'clock departure from New York. Uh, Arrival in Saratoga, uh, 116, four and a quarter hours. About a half hour slower than, than the Saratoga Limited. You can see the advertisement on the bottom, a parlor observation car, Laurentian, uh, Arrived by dinner, 
after a scenic day ride. So that was the, again, the cooperation between the Delaware and Hudson and the New York Central. Amtrak took over in 1970 and uh, changed the name of the train that ran from New York City uh, to Montreal to the Adirondack. And again, the time from New York City to Saratoga is about the same time as the, as the Laurentian, not much difference, but not equal to the Saratoga Limited. So from my perspective, I think that it, it's pretty amazing that that train, that time has never been equaled. Uh, the Delaware and Hudson ran a train in 1870 from Scranton, Pennsylvania, because that's where the Del Delaware and Hudson uh, originated in that central Pennsylvania area, all the way up to Saratoga Springs. Took them 10 hours. 10 hours. So it's no wonder, I think, that they said, okay, uh, Vanderbilt, we're going to cooperate with you and we'll, you take it to you take the train to New York City, and we'll take it, and, and we'll take it from uh, Troy to Saratoga. Uh, this is seen in, in, in Saratoga. You, that's the Adirondack coming in there. One of the problems that that um, train has is that they don't own the rails. Canadian Pacific owns these rails. And so Canadian Pacific makes more money by operating freight trains than they do operating the passenger trains. So the passenger trains a lot of times are held and uh, so that the freight trains can pass by. Um, and if you go to the station now, it's interesting, I don't know, the, the Adirondack does not run to Montreal anymore. They've stopped running. It, it, it goes from New York City to Saratoga and stops. And the reason for that is that they've had trouble with the Canadian National Railroad in Montreal, in Canada. So what happens is the train comes in, and then they back it up down to the Saratoga yard, turn it, and it backs up. And uh, I think this, the train comes in uh, from New York around noontime. They turn it, and it goes back down to New York at 6 p.m. at night. So if you're looking to go to Montreal, uh, you're not going to get there on by train unless maybe uh, during the fall things will change. But as of right now, doesn't go there far. This is kind of interesting. In 19, I'd say in the 1990s, I think early 1990s, um, there was a company called Royal Northern that said, hey, we can recreate Saratoga Limited. And um, what they did basically, and it says they've restored a 1938 Pullman car, one car, one car, at, and sold out at 369, I think it says 369, uh, per person. So um, they took the name Saratoga Limited, but one problem, it never reached there. Well, is it? Okay. I'll, Okay, one problem that they had was that the train went to Albany Rensselaer and they bussed the passengers up to Saratoga. I, I, I don't know how long this, this idea continued, but um, I would say it wasn't very popular to get off the train get on the bus and come up here. Maybe it was, I don't know. But um, they 
use this one car and probably put it on the back of a, an Amtrak train. It's the only way that they could have done it. So they restored this Pullman car. It's not moving again. <coughs> what did I do wrong? Did it try to advance it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is probably, I want to go back one if I can, okay. Um, this was an old sleeping car. Um, can I go back one? Yeah, let me just see here. Um, Okay, thank you. All right, they took an old New York Central uh, Railroad sleeping car, uh, which was modified in 1934. Um, it was part of a series called uh, the Dover, the Dover series. Um, the uh, Dover Strait, which was the car that I saw out in um, the Illinois Museum of Transportation, looked like this. So I imagine that the car that um, these people used for the Saratoga Limited that was attached to the Amtrak train looked something like this. And that's, that's I think, the last slide. But the point I'm trying to make here is that there were t attempts to imitate the Saratoga Limited that started in 1899 and went to 1906, but it was never duplicated, never duplicated. And so I think that Saratoga Limited, or call it a, a very special train, is, is, is well deserved. Um, that's the end uh, of my slides. Um, I would hope that you have some questions and we can have some dialogue either of the first few uh, photographs uh, and images that pertain to the Saratoga and Schuylerville Railroad or that pertain to the, um, to the Saratoga Limited. Yes, sir. Which side of the Hudson River did it come up on? The east or the west side? Which side of the Hudson did it come up on? The east or the west? <coughs> East side. So Amtrak side. On the west side is the west shore, you know, where West Point is. Yeah. On the other side is Ryan Cliff and 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 uh, but this the train came up on the on the on the east side. Um, one may ask uh, why did it this is a steam engine. How did it get into New York City? Because Trains have to stop at Croton Harmon to change to an electric engine. And I asked the same question to myself. What, why did it, why, where was the change to electric? But the answer is that they didn't start doing this until 1908, changing. In other words, steam engines were disallowed in New York City beginning in 1908. So this train is Grand Central or Grand Central Station? Grand Central Station? No. Not the current one. There was a previous one. They didn't call it Grand Central terminal, they called it Grand Central Station. Vanderbilt had all kinds of problems with that. He wanted to, to make it more beautiful and so he created the current Grand Central Terminal. Yeah, Mike. Okay. Uh, the Empire State Express, was that also known as the 999? Was the Empire State Express known as the 999? Yes, that, that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. The engine was the 999, right. Did that come to Saratoga too? Uh, 
No, the 999, that was on the Empire State Express. It did not, that was not the engine that was used for the Saratoga Limited. Yes, sir. How did the train get from uh, Troy to Saratoga? Now it goes through Schenectady. What was the, what was the path? I didn't quite understand. Those tracks still uh, usable? How did the Saratoga Limited get from Troy to Saratoga? Without going through Schenectady, as Amtrak does today. That, 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 that route from, from um, Albany Rensselaer to Schenectady is Amtrak's, and they do not go through Mechanicville. The DNH at the time of the Saratoga Limited went from Troy to Mechanicville, and, uh, and in fact, the bridge is still there. If you go into uh, Mechanicville, you see the bridge. Symbols on there. I think it's in that book. That Are those tracks still? Yeah. So you could still do that. You could still bring the train here. Uh, they could be used for freight. They could be used for freight. I'm not sure. But Amtrak doesn't use them. Questions? I don't have a question, but I'm, I'm going to add a little bit to a story. All right, so this goes back to last year. So, you know, um, they said Dick and I went out and we looked at um, various places where, you know, tracks that I knew about. So, we're, when we wanted to find where this, the Saratoga Scholarville ran, and I said, I know, um, let's go out Burgoyne Road, because I remember as a, as a young kid, I had a cousin that lived at the end of a Brown Lane. His name was Armand Brown. And I used to go out there and we'd fish, and I remember seeing the trusses that were right, right across Fish Creek. So he passed away a number of years ago. So we're driving up there, and Brown, Brown Road is not a public road. This is a private road. Um, and it just leads to some, some camps and actually one house that's on, that's on Fish Creek. So we're getting, we're getting up towards the end. Dick's like, we have to drive up, we gotta get closer. I was like, Dick, this is the front yard. No, that's all right, let's just get out and go look. So I convinced him we didn't want to do that, but so he went back without me. <laughs> so we have fun. I did not have any, when I went back there by myself after the rain, uh, I did not encounter anybody, so I, Jamie, nobody's mad at you. That's good. I just say it was your fault. <laughs> That's okay. How many passenger cars were on the, the Saratoga train? I'm sorry? How many passenger cars did they have on the train? It was about a six, seven car train. You look, I counted those on, from the Shaughnessy photographs. Um, my guess, how many passengers? What would you think? Over 100, probably. Um, 150, somewhere in there. Um, Saratoga at that time was a major attraction. I mean, as described in the, uh, in the, uh, you know, Saratoga Trunk there, I mean, uh, and you, you can look in that book and, and, and the Bolster Collection has all kinds of pictures of the activity in, in, in uh, Saratoga Springs at the time. So there were all kinds of famous people that came up here, uh, President Grant, other presidents. Uh, I mean, it was, it was really humming. So I would imagine if we assume a packed train, I would say at least a couple hundred, that would be my guess. Because you had six cars, parlor cars, an observation car, smoking, smoking uh, buffet cars. Um, uh, it, it's, I mean, I, I don't know the exact answer to your question, but I can only estimate that it was very popular. Good question. And yes, sir. Oh, oh. oh, Tommy had a question. Uh, did the train run here around? Yeah, just ask him. <laughs> did the train run here around or only in the summer? Did the train run here around or only in the summer? Um, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I 
my guess is, and Jamie, you can comment on this, if things were humming all year round in Saratoga Springs during the period of the Gilded Age. Yeah, it was, um, I would think probably only summertime, only because it, because it did the, the city or the village itself did quiet down greatly during the, you know, once, once we had the off season, like this building here only operated July and August, the track was only August. So probably not, but okay. I'm not an expert on it, so I wouldn't, so don't, don't take question. my word so for it. So let's assume that into the summertime and maybe into the fall, uh, but in the wintertime, it, but I have no evidence that it didn't run all year round. It, uh, Shaughnessy doesn't talk about that. So it just says it's every day Tommy. but Sunday. And one last question back here. Yeah, what was the fare for New York City to Saratoga? I don't know. Uh, the, we can only guess, I guess, the, the Royal Northern on their Saratoga Limited charged, what, $300, something like that? So I, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, but it's probably, you know, you can say maybe something less than $100, I, I don't know. Uh, the, the thing about the Saratoga Limited is that I only saw it in Shaughnessy's book. Uh, there's no other description of it that I found. And I was, when I came across that, that page, I mean, it really caught my eye. I was very surprised because I had not heard about it. And I, I think I asked you, did we have any in the bolster collection? Um, only one, and I, and we do have one image. Only it's only because I found a period postcard of the Saratoga Limited, and I saw the the engine number, and I matched the numbers up on the DNH. So it's, it has not been well publicized, except in Shaughnessy's book, and uh, those details such as. Uh, how much it costs to, to ride, unknown. Unknown. Yes, sir? Yeah, how did they turn the train around here? Did they have a roundhouse in the old station here? That train continued on. Did Saratoga Limited? Uh, the photo, there's a photograph. I assume that it went up to Rouse's Point continued on because that one photograph that I commented on where the speed had to be cut down because it was a kind of a, a mountainous area up there near Lake Champlain. Uh, so that tells me it went up that far. There's an old rusting, in Rouse's Point, there's an old rusting uh, roundabout turbine engine. It's not in a house, but it's there. So there, um, in Rouse's Point, there's a, um, you said it's a rusting engine in Roundhouse? Uh, it's not in the house, but it's a... a, a oh, oh, right. Around, it's around. a round, round, yeah. yeah, roundabout. Yeah. yeah, so that's probably the answer to me. I don't know if it went up to Montreal or not. So the, uh, near here is the Bog Meadow Brook hiking trail. And when you walk that, there's still the cross ties. Is that the same rail line that was used by the Saratoga Limited? Because that goes right through the Fish Creek, Fish Creek area. So it's going to the Bog Meadow Trail, where the, where the um, line ran, but that was Saratoga Schuylerville. Just on the runs parallel to Route 29. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Saratoga Schuylerville, right? Uh, if you go back in the, the park there? Yeah. And I guess they're quite far. You go back in there and you see old, I'm told you see old ties and things. Yeah, and that's the tree, and the trail's built right on that run. Okay. Right, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight, and hope to see you again soon.